What's going on, folks? It is K Spade the Prospect back today with a brand new video for you guys. Pro Am tip video to be exact. And I gotta admit, I kind of been slacking, man. This this video should have been out a long time ago. And to be honest with you, I was kind of dragging because I was like, I kind of felt like after the combine and everything, I really expected this mode to die down, and I didn't expect people really to care about the tips. And to my surprise, you guys still coming through and hitting me up, like, what's up with the tips? And that's a good thing. That means that the mode is still alive, it's still breathing, and it's still people looking to get better. So I'm gonna try my best to help in you know whichever way I can. I got some really good questions. Some that was uh, put in the comment section on the last video. Some people tweeted me questions. Some people would join live streams and just say, "Spade, I'm dealing with this, that, or the other." And the strangest thing happened today. I went on my Instagram. I never check private messages on Instagram. I got notifications off, so I really don't even know when they're there. I just so happened was being nosy. I'm gonna keep it a whole stack with y'all. I was on the toilet and I was kind of going through and I had a ton of messages. So I went through the messages and somebody went through and was talking to me about a pro-am issue they had. And it's an issue that a lot of people have. I really could, even just reading his words, I could feel how passionately the dude wanted to get his team right. And I decided it's time for me to pull myself up by my bootstraps, come back out here, and get back to delivering these tips, right? So without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into it. I don't even know what gameplay I'm gonna throw behind this, so like I said, that's just for you guys, so you don't have to look at my goofy ass face for 10 minutes, however long this lasts, 20 minutes. But uh, let's get into it, man. What, one of the things I wanna do in this one here, some of the questions may not, I might not have the name of the person that threw it to me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for broke, all right? First thing I wanna do on today's episode is talk about building a team. Now, I know we're late in the cycle, and somebody's probably gonna say, well, this is a dumb question. It's, it's almost April, who's still building the team? First of all, you'd be surprised. Second of all, it's guys who probably gonna take some of these tips and apply it to the next cycle, the next game that comes out when they wanna build a team. Folks were saying, Spade, what's the best archetypes to have? What's the best arc for big? What's the best? And it, there is no direct answer. I can't sit here and tell you, this is the best big, this is the best this or that, because with Pro-Am, it's like a puzzle, man. You gotta put the right arcs together. You gotta have the right people on the floor and you gotta get people that understand their role. So before you even get into how important the archetypes are, you gotta make sure you get the right people with the right mentality. If you got somebody who's not coachable, if you got somebody who's trying to do things that don't fit into the strengths of their player, that stuff right there is gonna limit your success. I'm just being flat out honest. And one of the things I'm gonna do in this episode too, I might come across like I got a bit of an attitude and maybe it's cause I do. Because there's a lot of guys out there that's hurting their pro-am teams just on some dumb shit. And people are like, it's, it's time out for that. Like if you only out here because you just care about your own personal, just go play my career. Let me say this. One of my concerns about the pro-am mode in general was that the birth of the 2K league was gonna hurt it. Not in the way that everybody think it is. Like, oh, well, if you don't go to the league, then people are not gonna wanna play. Yeah, it could hurt, it could hurt that way as well. But another thing that is, I'm, and I'm seeing it, you got people who are so concerned with their personal numbers, their stats, you know, their usage rate, how much they're doing, they're willing to take the L for the team to be able to say, 2K draft me, look at what I did. And this is very, very dangerous to a team. It's cancerous to a team. And if you got those guys on your team, look, watch them closely. I'm not just gonna tell you kick those guys off your team. They might be your friend, might be somebody you got a long-term relationship with. But keep a close eye on them and at some point you might have to approach that person and have a chat with them. But anyway, this is what I recommend right here. This is what I told somebody when you're trying to start a team. No right or wrong way to do it. Here's my recommendation. Every Pro-Am team needs at least one person that's so knocked down with their shot that when they miss a wide open one, it shocks you. Look, if you if your shooter's on your team, when you take a shot, you're like, uh, is he going? Oh, yes, he made it. Then you don't have the right shooter. You got to have a shooter on your team that when he missed, you go, oh, damn. Like, you really shocked that he, he missed. You need at least one of those on your team. You need one guy on your team who's a 1v1 headache for the defense. If it's a situation where, you know what, the offense ain't working, for some odd reason the shot's not falling, maybe my boy Mike Wang wouldn't mess with the shots, but we need a bucket. You need one person on your team that you can give it to and say, I feel good that this guy can get by this one person guarding him. Like, I'm not telling you guys to go five out, you do whatever you wanna do, but you need one guy on your team at least that you can throw him the rock, everybody else can get out of his way, ISO, and let him do what he do. You need that. You know what else you need on your team? And this one right here goes unmentioned. 
You need a guy who wants to guard the ball handler on the other team. Do that mean he gonna shut him down, absolutely stop him? No. But you need a guy who's up to the challenge and who who knows, I mean, I ain't just saying a guy who out there getting cooked who don't want to be switched. Like, bro, you getting cooked. Let me put somebody else on. No, I got him, I got him, I got him. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who's good at it, somebody who lives for that challenge who say, oh, okay, I see what he's doing. I got it, I got it. That You need one of those on your team. And this one right here really is the most slept on. You need somebody on your team who honestly doesn't give a damn about their touches. Now, this person right here is going to be the hardest to find because everybody, when you talk to them, they're going to tell you they're that guy. And 90% of them are lying. You'll know. You won't know probably in the first couple of runs because it's still new. Everybody like to put on that fake facade in front in the first couple of games. Give it a week or so, and they'll start to show their true colors. It's rare, but to me, they are the most important. Now, you want them to know what to do with the rock when they get it. But you need a person on your team that really don't care, that really just wants the win. Once you get those pieces right there, you can feel around them with people who are coachable. You got to have people who are coachable. They don't have to be the world's greatest players. You need a shooter, you need a 1v1 guy, you need an unselfish guy, and you need some coachable people around them. Everything else will figure itself out. That's the first tip of the day. The next tip I got, I actually got a name for it, comes from a guy, D Hill 819 and uh, D Hill said, man, what is the best way to defend bigs holding B in the paint? Like, they get in position. In case you guys don't know, they can get in that position. I don't need, I kind of feel like I addressed this one earlier. But if I didn't, and I did talk to my center about it, and this is the tip that he told me, so I'm going to share it with you guys. Obviously, you want to position yourself in between that person and the pass. Timing in this situation is super important. What you want to do, he says, around the time the ball is leaving the pass's hands, that's when you want to press the steal button to try to go for the steal. If you wait a little bit longer than that, it's, you're going to be late or you're going to get that animation where he does this like he don't want to get hit by it. Does it work every time? No. But practice that timing. The timing is the big thing there. Obviously positioning. And then two is the timing. If you get that timing right, you get a lot of steals. And you might make that PG second guess dumping that ball in there. After he get a few of those turnovers, he's going to be like, wait a minute. Maybe we should do something different here. All right? Um, got another one here. My boy John Smith come through and said, look, Spade, pure sharps that struggle with consistency. What's, what's the best thing to get right with consistency? It's a couple of things. One, we already know this, y'all. I hate to admit it. We should not still have this issue in 2018, but we do. Some shots and some bases simply fall more than others. I, I've been complaining about this ever since we went with all the custom shots. Some of them just flat out don't fall. That's why when you play some of these comp games and comp teams, you see a lot of folks using the same bases. It's really only about four bases that you see people use. And then, you know, from there, you're going to tinker with the release to find something that visually is appealing to you. And I don't necessarily mean appealing in the way of pretty, but I mean something for you to say, oh, okay, I notice when his hand does this, I need to release. Whatever, you find that. But obviously, you want to make sure you're using the right shot. That's crazy important. But next, and this is big for a shooter. You got to practice knowing the different catches you're going to get. Whether or not you're getting that load up shot, whether or not you're getting a good catch and shoot. Like all of this stuff varies. And if you're a shooter, you know instantly. Ah, it gave me that delayed shot. Or it gave me the loaded. You know. But if you can look at your player and know, if you can anticipate the loading coming, then you should know the timing for it. And I mean, the only key to that is getting up a lot of shots. And sometimes just shooting in the arena won't give you all the variations you need because sometimes you can't get that loaded so i don't care if you play park i don't care if you get in the my court with a couple of your pro-am teammates and just shoot just i'm telling you you got to realize okay i'm about to get this loaded i'm about to get that one that gives me a little hitch with my base sometimes they give me this thing where he kind of i don't i can't even describe it but it's just a little hitch and it'll throw your time off just a tad bit i know when i get it nine times out of ten i'm like i'm gonna miss this one uh, you know what I'm saying? And of course, we already know that full bar slightly late never falls. But learn your shots. Make sure you're using a, a base that, that falls at a pretty good clip. And the rest is you just getting muscle memory and getting your shot in, all right? Uh, QB for prayers. This one right here, he, he's got a tough one. QB says, what do we do about teammates who always think they're open? This one here is, is tough. This one's tough. Uh, this is a problem that exists on a lot of teams. Oh, you missed me. You had me right there. Or, you know, I've had teammates be like, you got me. You got me. 
and you a pastor, like I, I'm trusting your voice. So when you say you got me and I pass to you and it's a turnover for me or the defender standing right here, I'm kind of like, what you mean you open, bro? You not open. It's going to be those situations where you don't agree. And it don't matter, man. Sometimes they really are open and you can't tell. It looks different on your on your perspective. Um, and I don't know, man. Trust them. Give them the rock and see if they can make the shot and make the right read with it. If they do, then you build that rapport with them that when they say they're open, you don't even look. You just icon it to them and you let them work. If you do that a few times and it bites you in the ass, then you got the right to say, nah, you know what? I'm trusting my judgment. All right? Now, this next question here, he had a two-part question. He says, how do you get through encouraging your teammates that some things just can't be stopped? And, and with that, I assume he's talking about the five out. And if you play a really good five out team, man, they can really make you feel like what they're doing here is just unstoppable. And I don't think anything in this game is purely unstoppable, but the five out is close to it. If you play a really good team with it, it's next to impossible. What you have to do, though, is get really creative in your approach. And sometimes... You have to do stuff that makes no sense just to try to confuse them. And sometimes you're going to give up shots. Even with, like, a lot of times I hear people on the wing say, well, I don't want to shave. Last time I shaved, I gave up a three. I don't want to shave. You still got to shave. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you say, on this next one, I'm not going to shave. On the next two, I'm not going to shave. And then I'm going to shave so hard, I'm running straight to yours. You run straight to mine. Communication is key. And, and, you know, if you go out there and you give it your best effort and you play a team and they just score in every time, you have to say, you have to walk away from that game and just say, look, man, they just had our number. Like, we, we couldn't stop it. It happens sometimes. It's not going to be easy to deal with. I know for me, I don't like to lose. And anytime I lose a game, I don't know if right after that game, if I want to hear it was nothing we could do to stop it. But realistically, sometimes it feels that way. Now, I kind of want to talk about this message that I got on IG. Me and this guy talked for a little while, and and, and this case was weird. And you got to understand something, man. When I tell you pro-am players, and I'm kind of in my bag today, y'all, so forgive me. But pro-am players can be some of the grimiest, slimiest, snakish people in the world, man. Because nine times out of ten, everybody has an ulterior motive. And I'm telling you, you can't really take people at their face value. But my man was going through it, and a lot of folks might look at me and say, Spade, it don't seem like y'all go through this. And, and look, we definitely have our issues. We have our spats. We don't always agree, and no team is going to always agree. And you got to make sure you got thick skin. Now, we live in a day and age, and I say this all the time. I think the majority of the people that play Pro-Am didn't play real-life sports. So they don't understand, like, in, in real-life sports, when you make a mistake, if it's film study, the coach is going to call you out in film study. And he'll say, 15, what were you doing right here? Like, what? What did I tell you to do in this situation and what are you doing? Are you doing what I coached you to do here? Embarrass you right there in front of the whole team. Now you can go home and cry about it. You can quit the team or you can get some thick skin toughen up. But what happens is uh, like assigning that accountability to you saying, look, this is you right here doing what I coached you not to do in front of others. Sometimes it's a learning experience. You go, okay, I can't do that. I get it. Pro-Am players don't always have that. So if you go to your teammates like, yo, you got to stop crashing or you got to stop jumping at every pump fake. They might feel like you coming at them. I, I don't know. It's tough. But anyway, let's get into it. So he says, you know, I got a really good team. I feel like we got the potential. We're on the PlayStation. We're E3 team. But here's the issue that we run into. I'm running the offense. I got another guy on the team that has a stretch big. He also has a point forward. When we lose games, he wants to run the offense. You know, he gets a little upset with me. He tells some of my other teammates things about me behind my back and it's growing, it's brewing. I don't know if I should kick him off the team. He's a good player. I want him on the team. This is tough, tough, tough. And too many, too many pro-am teams deal with this. Too many pro-am players have this issue and too many owners put up with it. Too many team owners put up with it. So here's what I say. I kind of want to do something weird here. I want to give a shout out to iStyles. You guys probably know him. He used to be point guard for TMM. He's no longer on TMM, but it's actually never been any beef between me and styles and i kind of want to styles don't even know i'm gonna say this about him but i'm gonna say it i've always had respect for styles because styles will make you cuss him out literally in the game you'll miss a shot or you'll take a shot and he'll say spade what are you doing that he's dominican so that's my bad dominican impersonation spade what are you doing why did you shoot that that's a stupid shot and i'll be like Styles, shut up like we'll have it out but at the end of the day, I respect Styles that he won't say, good shot, Spade, good shot, and then hit up one of my teammates and go, man, what's up with Spade? That's a terrible shot. 
I don't respect that. I respect him more telling me right there that he thinks it's a dumb shot. Now, I might cuss him out for saying that, and we'll have our spat, but I know exactly how he feels, and not enough people operate that way. They'll tell you whatever they think you want to hear, and then they'll go behind your back and they'll trash you. I'm not going to say you got to cut this guy from the team because, unfortunately, I think the majority of the people handle their situations that way. They won't come to you and say, this is what you should do and this is what you should do. So this is what I told him. You got this situation where you run in the offense. And I say it all the time. I don't feel like people listen when I say it. Running the offense is the toughest thing to do in this mode. It's like somebody sitting at home in their living room playing armchair quarterback going, oh, hey, right here, Carson Wentz, he missed the guy in the flats. Yeah, I mean, you can see all that sitting on your living room. And then he did a moment during the game. You don't know what's good. You don't know who his first read is on these plays. Like, you just drop back. This ain't Madden where icons pop up over everybody's head. You got a hot read. If that read's not there, you go through your progressions. Pro-Am is kind of the same way when you're running the offense. Do you look to score? If you're running a play, you know where you're looking first. If that guy's covered, you might look at your second read. You might decide to score. And in that time, you're going to miss people. It's a reality. You can't play... And, and never miss people. It, it just happens. So sometimes the best thing to do is if you got another guy on that team that wants to play that same position and he waits till you guys lose to point out your mistakes, give him a run. Give him a week. Give him a week. Give him three days. So you know what? For the next three days, you run the O. And you let him see that it's not what he think it is. Because I guarantee you, regardless of how good that other player is, he's going to also miss player, uh, you know, miss open teammates and make bad reads, it comes with the territory. You have to try to build a team that functions as a team and that is getting tougher and tougher. And like I said at the beginning of this video, the birth of the 2K League only makes this even tougher now. Only makes this even tougher. You got guys that'll get lost, that'll get blown out by 30 and be talking about their stat line at the end of the game. For me, I don't want that on my team. I'm good, I'll pass on that. I'd rather take the loss and have guys like, okay, here's what we need to do to get better or even win an ugly game and have somebody on my team that didn't have a game that they wanted to say good win team. Then they had that one person that only gives a damn about his stats so he can go say, you know, 2K draft me. What It's tough. It is really tough. As far as the talking behind other teammates' backs, a lot of times it's not malicious. And I, I think it happens more than people really expect. And I think for the most part, everybody's guilty of it. I've even done it. Not in a malicious way. But I might hit up a teammate and say, what do you think about this shot Philly took in the third? Like, you think he was tripping or, you know, was he being selfish or whatever? And you don't know. It might make it back to him. And he thinking, damn, they over there dragging me. So the best approach is just to say what you're thinking. Are you going to piss some people off? Yes. But you, especially if you're a team owner, it's not easy. If you want to be a team owner, sometimes you're going to piss off teammates. You cannot walk on eggshells. You might, you might ask somebody during the game, yo, why'd you take that? It's a crazy shot. You had me. And then go ahead and have that little spat if it's going to be a spat. And then you can leave it there. Nothing got said behind this person's back. It's not a, It's not going to get back to them in some crazy way. You know, you're going to be good to go. I know this is something that a lot of Pro-Am teams deal with. Uh, my advice to you guys is talk. I told this guy. He was like, do you feel like I should put him off the team? Not first, Not at first. Now, it might come to that. First thing I do is pull him to the side and say, yo, why is it every time we lose, you come for me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you think it goes like that in the NBA? You think every time the Rockets lose, you think they bust in the locker room like, damn, James Harden, you missed me? Like, realistically, it can't be that. You're going to lose. I don't care who is at what position. You're not going to go undefeated. I mean, you got teams, some of the best teams on the leaderboards, they got losses. They're not going to go undefeated. And at the end of the day, after you talk to this teammate, if you got a guy on your team that want to bring it to you every time y'all lose, you might as well get his ass up out of there. You might as well. You might as well get them out of there. Now, what I notice is people approach Pro-Am the same way they approach like a job. When somebody get a new job and they showing up on time, you know, they coming back from lunch on time. After a while, they get comfortable. Then they start coming in a little late. Now they taking a little long on break and Pro-Am is the same way. Everybody that I've ever had on my team, they come in super humble, just happy for the opportunity, willing to do whatever the team need them to do. After a while, once that comfort sets in, it changes. You got people who... You know, they had their own objectives. And sometimes their objectives is secondary and we can still function. Once their objectives becomes primary and then the team objective becomes secondary, then we got to have a conversation. We got to decide whether or not we're still best fit for each other. And if we decide we're not, we got to part ways. And it's not even a beef thing. Like, it's, it's, it's never like 
oh, I don't rock with him. He's, it's just, you know what? Maybe he outgrew this situation. Maybe it's time for him to go spread his wings and do this or pursue this or that or whatever. And we keep it moving. So how long have I been talking? 21 minutes. Anyway, man, I know this particular episode right here was probably all over the place. <laughs> I apologize for that, man. I'm going to try to get back on my P's and Q's and start dropping these more often. As always, man, if you got questions, uh, any situations you might be going through, whether it's archetype questions or even how to deal with certain things on your team, drop them in the comment section if you want to. You can tweet me. I don't see all tweets, but I try. And I won't recommend that Instagram message thing because it ain't no telling when I see it. It could be months from now. But uh, any way you can get to me, get to me and ask your question, man. And if I can't find the answer, I'll try to talk to somebody who can find the answer. At the end of the day, man, this is a great mode. It's a fun mode. And if you got the right people around you, it can really, really, really be fun. I mean, like, super fun. I don't care whether you win it or not. If you don't have the right people around you, I think it limits the type of fun you can have on it. Like, anytime you got a game where you can win... And instead of after the win, everybody's not celebrating. Somebody's pissed off because they didn't get this many shots or they didn't get that many touches. Or I don't know, man. In the words of Mike Singletary, sometimes you can't win with them, can't, can't play with them, can't. Anyway, folks, that's all I got for this episode of my Pro-Am Tip Series. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. It is a playlist for this series. So if you got questions, maybe it's already been addressed. Check some of the previous videos and I always timestamp the topics. You can look in the description and see the timestamp. You can go straight to the section that you care about. But that's all I got for today. Bang a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I'm out the next time, folks. Peace.